Good evening. Welcome to all who have joined us in person or via Facebook, live, or Zoom. For all of you that are here in person, would you please take a moment to ensure your cell phones are on silence. We begin our Wednesday evening service with a pre-service meditation. So I invite you to get still, close your eyes, and as we play God is the Love That I Am chant, you may choose to chant along or simply follow along silently, repeating this mantra to yourself. If your mind wanders, simply bring it back to this mantra, God's the love that I am.
And so as our meditation comes to a close, gently bring your awareness back to your surroundings, into your bodies, and as you feel ready, open your eyes. Welcome to those who have joined us while our meditation was in progress. We're so glad to have you with us virtually or here in person. Let's begin with our opening chant, God is in this place. Let us join together in prayer. So as we come together in this evening, knowing that today has just unfolded so beautifully, for we live and breathe and have our beings in God. God is never separate. And so I just know that as we come together this evening, that we give so much thanks for the beautiful message that we hear, for our beautiful soloist, all the people working behind the scenes, we are blessed we are so blessed for this beautiful evening service. I know that each and every one of us are here by divine appointment and we hear exactly what it is we need to hear. And so for this, we are grateful. We give thanks for all that is in our lives in this very moment as we simply release the word into the law of mind knowing it is already done. And so, and so we give thanks for that and we say amen together. Amen. And will you please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not in temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will this day I be a blessing? Will this year be better than the last? Will I calm the voice that hounds me? Discard the demons of the past? Will I step out in my faith now and live the truth I've come to know? 
Throw my dreams into the river and let these four words help them flow. Singing, yes, God, I believe you. Yes, God, I believe you. Yes, God, I believe you. Sing it with me now. Yes, God, I believe you. Yes, God, I believe you. Yes, God, I believe Maybe it's a body that needs healing. Relationship that's worn, or a child that is in trouble, and here's a friendship that's been torn. There's a job that needs new vision, a bank account that needs belief. I don't gotta tell you all my problems. I just got to rest in your relief, singing, yes, God, I believe, yes, God, I believe, yes, God, I believe, sing it with me now. Alrighty then. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yesterday I suffered a significant loss. My iPhone went missing. Oh, I thought there'd be more reaction than that. Come on. Let's try that again. My iPhone went missing. So, and while I'm doing everything now on the physical plane to work with local officials, you know, T-Mobile, to lock my phone, search for my phone, and arrange for a replacement, at least until 
my iPhone returns to this uh, space and time continuum, um, I have some wisdom to share with you. Lessons I have gotten so far from this experience of tragic loss. So I've learned, and I'm aware already, because I've studied this a bit, that my amygdala, my lizard brain, is craving, is craving the addictive charge that those droplets of L-dopamine, I don't know if they're droplets, but anyway, that charge of L-dopamine that I get whenever I pick up or, you know, picked up my phone. And I have also learned that while donuts don't aid in the recovery effort, they do assist in the grieving process. <laughs> and I want you to do, I did a deep dive, a deep dive just to be sure. Three donut holes, a cinnamon cruller, half a maple log, and one large size oversweetened cappuccino, they called it, from a machine. And I'm no closer to finding my phone. I am, however, nursing a pretty good shame spiral. So I know, and I know that I know, that we are spiritual beings living in a spiritual universe governed by spiritual law. And sometimes it seems as if my greatest challenge is to remember that I have areas, oh heck, we'll call them triggers, in my life that will squeeze me and cause me to grow. Can I tell you how much I hate that? Anybody else? Yeah, yeah. So in looking at this time of great loss and sacrifice, yeah, I know, it's just a phone. I get that there could be a greater lesson here about my, um, my, my ongoing relationship with control. So my family will tell you that for years I have assured them, them, assured them that I am not a control freak, I am just a high-level planner. And boy, did I not plan on any level to misplace my phone. So I got to tell you, I am so grateful for the people who work in this church. I love being here every single day. You know, we have the best time. The, the, the biggest reason that just, it just touches me so much. And every time I think about coming in, I st am still getting goosebumps. I'm still getting God bumps because it's really, really amazing to be here. And I get to work in the office with Terry Prince and Doreen Remo. Yeah. I know, right? They are like the goddesses of grace. I mean, they are so wonderful. And so together we imagine, we create, we are productive, and we laugh. So through it all, there is always this great sense of love, respect, integrity, and, and the commitment to living in the principles that we teach here, the science of mind. So this morning, with all of this going on, Terry Prince gently and lovingly reminded me that there are life events that can rate very high, very high on the stress meters. I don't know who created these meters, and apparently they're like numbers, you know, and the ones that rank the highest are moving out of a home, finding a home, moving into a home, stepping into a new job, recalibrating your spousal relationship when you become empty nesters. All of those things, they rate very high on psychological scales because those things have a huge potential to cause stress beyond our normal day-to-day -day healthy stressors, right? Or unhealthy, depends on what it is you do and how you respond to it. So while neither Terry nor I are arguing for the right to claim stress and claim challenge and to claim panic anyway, um, I need you to know, my husband and I have been dealing with all of those things I just listed simultaneously. They're all happening at the same time. And that's a lot. And yet I've been going along thinking that, that you know, we're okay, we're okay, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. And that it was just my dog who was experiencing some, some um, reactions to this. Some of you might remember I talked about she's a border collie and she really went um, into her own spiral because she could not herd all of our boxes back into order when we were leaving our house. And now we're in, we've, we've been in two Airbnbs since August 19th, and we're still not done yet, even though we finally are going to be moving into our house at the end of the month. But so Bella has finally adjusted. She's no longer going crazy. She started to eat again. Yeah, she's still on Prozac, but she's doing much better. 
So I thought the dog was the only one who was going to be out picturing this. Guess what? I know it's really important to recognize that, yes, as spiritual beings living in a spiritual universe that is governed by spiritual laws, we still have to acknowledge that we are here not to transcend our humanity, but to embrace it, to assimilate it, to celebrate it. And that means that if we are open, our humanness, this precious, beautiful, golden, so, so ah, ephemeral and perfect humanness will offer us amazing opportunities to be compassionate with ourselves and with others. So I want to tell you that I've been moving through all of these life changes with, you know, elegance, grace, ease, and a regal, almost queenly demeanor. <laughs> I really want to tell you that. I really want to tell you that. But um, uh, my current reality is that I'm seriously considering curling up in a fetal position under the piano over there and just sending out for a whole bunch of pizza and chocolate. So my topic tonight is ready, willing, and able. So the spiritual context I planned, high-level planner, for my message tonight is, I'm ready to be inspired and transformed. I'm willing to listen for guidance and a higher knowing. And I'm able to take action and to show up in power, confidence, and greater aliveness. That sounds really good, right? I'd kind of like to meet that girl sometime. <laughs> I think we'd be friends. She'd probably think I'm too controlling. So let's actually be real here. Um, my current actual context around this title of ready, willing, and able is more along these lines. I'm ready to lash out at everyone and everything. I'm willing to take the science of mind textbook and throw it out that window over there. And I'm able to whine about and even show you all the ways that God is messing with me. So I do know, and I learned this a long time ago, that nothing good comes from reactivity, being reactionary, being like visceral and just that is how you live. And it, nothing good comes from another thing that I like to call the action of distraction. The action of distraction. So reacting without thought or consideration almost always demand that I apologize to someone, usually my family, for my... In fact, we coined a word several years ago for my snarcasm. <laughs> and the action of distraction doesn't solve anything. It just feels like there's activity going on. So it kind of gives you a measure of, of control or at least managing what's happening. It has the potential to send me down the rabbit holes of shopping, eating, binge watching TV, and scouring the internet for hours at a time for proof that Elvis still lives. <laughs> Distraction is not a solution. It's just ignoring the problem. Distraction is not a solution. It's just we're ignoring the problem. Even though we may be exceptionally good at our distraction mechanisms, the problems still remain. And you know what? They keep growing. They're unsolved, unresolved, and they keep growing. They're like weeds, right? If we don't pull the weeds and we kind of say, well, yeah, they're there, but I'll, I'll, uh, it, I'm going to go over here now. The weeds will continue to affect the growth in the garden, the condition of the soil, the beauty of the flowers that are trying to show up. So I want solutions. I want fixes. I want to make everything nice and pretty and fun again, right? In fact, it's usually me. I'm usually the one who will go to my husband, and if I feel the need to be listened to, although he wants to get out his toolkit and fix it and give me advice, because he's a man, and that's kind of a normal thing, right? Um, he will, I got one yeah over there from Blair, the contractor. Um, <laughs> And I will often say, I, I need you to just hear me. Just listen. Don't try to fix it. And not surprisingly, that's the same response I'll get from my son when he, has, he just has a need to vent, just to vent, to dump, to just let stuff out. And of course, mom, I have all the answers. 
I can fix this. I want solutions. I can solve this. I can do all of this. And he, God bless this young man who will say, Mom, I don't need you to fix this. Would you just listen? Oh, man. So if I don't go deeper than solutions and fiction, fixing to explore how my beliefs and my thinking have created whatever the problem is, I will probably continue to have the same issue. That is not fun. And the best way I can describe it is second verse, same as the first, a little bit louder and a little bit worse. And that's what happens if we don't really decide that we are worthy enough to explore what our beliefs are, to explore what we've been thinking, to explore what we might have accepted as true for us or just habitual for us, everything gets worse. It's, it is this thing of inertia that it, it doesn't just stop, it actually keeps going. And we want it to go in a positive direction. We want it to go in a direction that is towards wholeness and harmony and resolution, which is the nature of life. It is the nature of spiritual law to take what we give it and to run with it. So if we are giving it, and this happens so much with our, our unrecognized beliefs that we might have accepted early on in life, if we are giving spiritual law fear and doubt, um, unworthiness, spiritual law says, okay, I only know one word. It's yes, let's go with it. So... I remember finding um, a quote several years ago that I really, really liked. And you've probably heard it because we it, it's just the perfect science of mind quote. And it's from Albert Einstein. Or it's attributed to him. Some people say it is. Some people say it's not. But here's, here's what I love about it. The quote is, we cannot solve our problems with the same level of thinking that created them. Isn't that totally science of mind? Isn't that totally, you're supposed to rise above the conditions and the problem to that level of solution so that we can live and be informed from a greater wisdom and a deeper connection with God. But what if spending some time in the level of thinking that created the problems is exactly what we need to do in order to uncreate the problems and then rise to the level of solution. What if that's the process we need to engage in? It's so easy to just say, I will not stay in this land of problems. I am going to go right to solution. I am a spiritual being. I am whole, perfect, and complete. Blah, 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 blah. And in my world, we call it spiritual bypass. We do an end run around the issue. And we just keep moving, thinking movement means solution. It doesn't. It just means movement. So Ernest Holmes wrote this wonderful little book called Can We Talk to God? And this is cool. Where does God come in? God already is in and does not have to come from anywhere to anywhere. God is the entire process, both in our thought as individuals and in the universal as answering our individual thought. God already is there. So this tells me that it's not wrong or lazy thinking or, or negative thinking even to make friends with whatever the problem seems to be. It tells me that if God, if we really believe that God is everywhere equally present, then that which is showing up as a quote unquote problem is actually the solution in drag. It's in disguise. It's in drag. So years ago, I had this wonderful teacher whose name was Helen Street at the Glendale Church of Religious Science. And she used to always, always say, God always has a bigger idea. And I was so influenced by that, I put it on every business card I ever printed. God always has a bigger idea. In other words, what looks like a lost iPhone is really a vehicle for me to become present one more time to slow down and to remember who I am as a divine, perfect, and intentional creation of spirit. I so wish that I could be that perfect spiritual being, that ideal all the time. And yet so many of us, I think, divorce ourselves from our human sense, our humanity, our human beingness, 
And that's what we're here to explore, to celebrate and enjoy. Your humanness, your humanity is not a mistake. It's not something that God did wrong. Your problems are not mistakes. All of these things, because we know it's all God, it's not God and something, it's God as all things, as all life, that our role is to recognize that that which appears to be a problem is really not a problem, but is another opportunity, yes, to reveal God. Now, is it going to hurt? Oh, yeah. As um, the philosopher, oh, if I, I can't think of his name right now, but he said, life is like an onion. There will be tears. Yeah, you're going to cry. There will be stuff. But we can move through that. We don't have to live there. We can visit that place and know that we are informed by the divine itself. We are working with infinite intelligence, not big dummy in the sky. We have infinite intelligence, which is guiding us, which is living through and as us to the degree that we are willing to acknowledge it and to listen to that and to own it. So I spoke a little bit about rabbit holes, and I do give myself permission to go down science of mind rabbit holes, because I'm, I'm a metaphysical geek. I'm an Ernest Holmes geek. I'll admit it. I just love this stuff. So I found a couple of other Ernest Holmes quotes from, from some very old Science of Mind magazines. And these are from articles. And they speak to this belief that God always has a bigger idea. So Ernie wrote this. God is our life now. It is not a life we are going to attain someday. It is our life. We are not gradually becoming unified with God. We cannot be separated from God. We shall never have to unify with God, but we shall have to recognize that we are not separated from God. Then anything in our experience that appears to be separated will flow together. It will rush together as the mountain torrent rushes across the valley to join the ocean. It is in our recognition it is, in our it is in our willingness to have the recognition that God lives and moves within us as wisdom, as love, as power, as presence, as possibility, as all of that. Yes, solution. That which we call a problem is really an emergence. It is something being born. It is a new possibility, some growth, strength, and, and incredible beingness that wants to express and can only express the way you and I express it. Nobody else can do that. And if we don't give birth to that, then it doesn't show up in the world. And we're all part of this divine puzzle. I really believe this, or divine tapestry, whatever visual works for you, in which as we all do our parts, as we play our parts and listen to the inspiration, listen to the voice within, listen to that, that, that restlessness that is within us. As we do that, if we listen to it and we respond to it, guess what? We get to all be together as part of that which lifts this planet, lifts this whole, every situation in life, whatever it is that we have called as less than perfect, but we are the ones when we are awake and listening that we get to know for all of us that life is good, that God is present, that we are, we are here as divine, all of us, all of us. And you can't separate from God. You couldn't do it even if you wanted to. It just doesn't work that way. Every single part of your being is God. To the degree that we recognize it, boy, do we fly. To the degree that we don't, boy, do we not fly. So there's another quote that I really liked. We are not all that God is, of course. But everything that we are is made out of God because there is nothing else it can be made of. The universe holds us forever in its warm and close embrace. Oh. When you and I turn to that divinity within us, we shall feel something and we shall know something that every endeavor of the ages has sought after the living God. You and I, are the living God. We are the livingness of God. We are that, I like to say, we are that Bhagavad Gita. We are the song of God. And each of us has their own song to sing. 
their own song to sing. You have your own path, your own song, and all of these things because this is this extraordinary harmony that keeps the planets in their orbits and not just flinging around the universe. You and I, we sing our songs together, whatever it is, as career, as parent, as secretary, as doctor, as plumber, as, what, as, as retired minister, <laughs> as singer, as composer, as all of that, as we do it, this divine harmony, which is always healing, always weaving together, always expressing in wholeness, and always seeking to balance, to harmonize, then we become this divine choir. We become this divine orchestra. We become the voice of God. We are that song of God. So I've decided that ready, willing, and able as healthy intention falls somewhere in between being ready, willing, and able to go completely postal and being ready, willing, and able to behave as if I am the Dalai Lama's love child. There has to be something in the middle, right? So for me, the rest of this week, my ready, willing, and able are going to look more like this. I'm ready to take a breath and to forgive myself for being normal. I'm willing to be present in every moment to accept that absent the donuts, I'm divine now. I'm able to be compassionate with myself and the people around me. So for me, this is the reading, the willing, the ready, the willing, and the able. That we are ready to embrace our humanity. That we're willing to celebrate it, knowing that we are divine humans. We are divine humans. And there, there's no junk among us. Everything that we are is divine, as we are right here and right now. And I'm able, we are each able to the degree that we say yes. We say yes to that call. We say yes to that which we see that wants attention, that wants to be healed, that wants to be fixed, that, that person that, who wants to be fed, that child who needs to be loved, that, that disease that wants to be healed, whatever that is, we are able to say yes to being part of that, to being part of that puzzle of compassion, that puzzle of empathy, that puzzle of support, of possibility, that puzzle of laughter, that tapestry of laughter. It's really, really important because that's where we all come together in joy. So what I really know is that all of us, all of us just get to sit back, relax, take a moment, and remember that we're doing our best to do just what Ram Dass said. We're here to walk each other home. So let's walk each other home. Let's do it with joy with forgiveness, with self-compassion, with understanding, with patience. It's not about the phone, Sydney. It's often about the donuts. But let's remember that we are here to walk each other home. Let's pray. So we simply turn within once again, knowing that as we are here to walk each other home, we are here to escort each other into a deeper realization of love. We are here to walk each other into compassion. We are here to walk each other into knowing ourselves and each other as whole beings of God now. And that whatever our need or problem appears to be, the wholeness, the power, the presence, the love, the infinite intelligence that is God, that is spirit, is right now moving to make it exactly what it already is, to make it divine, to express the divinity in that, to express the wholeness, to weave it all together as perfect right action. So if that need appears to be in the realm of relationship, I know that God is expressing right now as that activity of love, as that activity of perfect harmony, of understanding, of creating space for differences, knowing that they are all just celebrations of how we are in the variety of life. And if the issue or the problem appears to be one of money or abundance, I know and I declare and I accept for each one of us 
that the wholeness of God cannot be denied, the flow of God cannot be blocked, and that we are each experiencing the support of the infinite source of life itself. I know that universe, this universe, is seeking to always bless us, to lift us up, to feed us, to supply us with all that we need, with plenty to share, to spare. And so we say yes to that, and we allow this wholeness to simply dissolve anything which appears to be unlike that, any ideas which have seemed to stand in the way of knowing that we are abundantly, infinitely sourced, we let them go now. We know that the wisdom of God, yes, is absolutely smart enough and powerful enough to dissolve any limiting ideas about who we are and what we are sourced by. And if the issue or the area appears to be one of wholeness in the shape of health, in the expression of health, in the experience of well-being and energy and radiant power and presence, I know that God right here and right now is expressing in that activity of divine wholeness, of divine healing, of divine right action, and that all cells, tissues, bones, muscles, whatever, every single part of the human body is now reflecting the divine body. That we are the divine of God. I am the wholeness of God made, ah, made apparent, made real, made physical, made wonderfully. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. We are fearfully and wonderfully made because we are the divine. And we claim that, and we know that. And we know that in that claiming, in that knowing, again, any thought of limitation is gone. Poof, it is a no thing, it is nothing. Because we know that we live in the wholeness, in the presence, in the truth. We are saturated with God. And nothing can squeeze that out of us. Not even me, not even you. No one can do that. We are the divine. And it is loving and wonderful. So as I claim this and know this and accept this, I know that it is true that we are whole now. That there is peace on this planet. That there is joy on this planet. And that we relax into the arms of this, ah, the arms of God. We simply relax. And I know for all of us, and I invite you to say it with me now, and I'll say it twice, I accept these truths for myself and for beings everywhere. Let's say it again. I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. So we know that this is how life is. We accept it. I am so grateful, and we celebrate with a sense of, of the gratitude that we had when we were three years old and came down the stairs on Christmas morning and saw the tree. Imagine a puppy under the tree. That's the gratitude that we have. That is the spirit we have. That is the thanksgiving that we have right here and right now. So I release this word into spiritual law, God's law, knowing that it is already so. In fact, all we've done is recognize the truth that already is. And so it is. Together we say, Amen.
Okay, so now is the time, and you can do this at home, but since you're here, you can do it here, to take our tithes, our gifts, our love offerings, and just to hold them in your hand, and I invite you to hold it then to your heart, and to say with me, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. All right. We have another one. Bless it all. Thank you. Okay, that was great. Thank you so much. So we have several ways to make donations to the church here. So I'm going to read them all off. You can call the office at 818-762-7566, or you can go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give, or you can text the word give to 818 818- Four five seven three four one nine. Also, we wanted to remind you that if you shop at Amazon, you can use the Amazon Smile and select our church. You'll find us under Church of Religious Science North Hollywood as the charity of your choice. This is a benefit to the church, and it costs nothing to you. We offer prayer with a practitioner after service today, and that can be here or on Zoom. We also have email prayer requests. You can email us at prayer at nhcrs.org, or you can put a prayer request in one of the boxes in the back. You can also call our prayer line, and you call the church office, and it's option four. Next Wednesday, October 27th, Reverend Sidney will be here again. Meditation at 6.50, services at 7 p.m., and her topic next week is God Will. Say what? (laughs) Youth Church is open on Sundays. We are welcoming our youth of all ages for the 945 service, and they are currently meeting outside on the church lawn. Living a Course in Miracles is on Zoom. It, this is facilitated by our practitioner, Jeannie Laporte. They will meet tomorrow, October 21st, from 7.15 to 9.15 p.m. The Grief Support Group is on Zoom. This group is facilitated by our practitioner, Carol Whitaker, and this will meet n- this coming Sunday on Zoom at 1 p.m. Okay, we're going to have some fun around here. We've got the free, spectacular Halloween costume party and movie night. 
So mark your calendars. It's going to be Friday, October 29th from 7 to 10 p.m. Join us at 7 sharp for your contest, for your costume contest, and we've got super fun prizes, followed by a screening of one of my favorite movies, Young Frankenstein. Remember, what hump? There's food. Yes. <laughs> so many great lines. There are going to be food and treats on the patio, and please sign up in the foyer if you're planning to attend, or you can email Terry in the church office at admin at nhcrs.org. We have the Zoom patio before Sunday and after before and after, sorry, I said that wrong, Sunday and Wednesday services. We also have a Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. You can visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain the Zoom links. And for more information about all our wonderful events and the weekly e-blasts. So I think I got all those. So now we will ask Reverend Sidney to please give us our benediction. All right, well, I'm gonna do one thing first. Um, I have to tell you, we are so, so blessed by the people who show up here in service. And first of all, by the way, Margaret Owens, you rock. If you want to know more about her and you want to take some of her, oh, that's right, I'm masked, I'm safe. See, I'm used to having an iPhone where nobody can tell if I'm, you know. <laughs> I am not going to let that one up. In fact, I walked by earlier. I saw Margaret over there scrolling on her iPhone, and I said to her, I used to do that. <laughs> so, but I would really invite you to go to margaretowens.com so you can listen to her music, buy your music. Oh, yeah, we need to support her. Absolutely. So thank you again. Okay, we have had these awesome people in our virtual support realm for our digital ministry team. Uh, today, tonight, the practitioner who was holding vigil online was Liz Racy. Our Facebook Live support was Melissa Allen. Our Zoom support was Alma Alvarez, Lynn Romanowski, and Robin Wolford. And they are awesome. So let's give them... So in the room... Lights and sound, Adam Cashin, thank you very much. Our greeters, ushers, Julie Rothstein Daniels and Colleen Butler. Sanctuary media team, that's Doreen Remo, Brenda Jordan, Mark Kroll, and Blair Thompson. You rock. Tonight our pianist was Reverend Sidney. Yeah. Pulpit support, Suze Webster. And me, Reverend Sidney, for Pulpit Minister. And we want to thank all of you in Zoom land and Facebook land, and all of you, whether you joined us face, live or virtually, we are grateful. And we are so, so honored that you choose to spend this time with us and to check out God, you know? Okay, so let's, let's do some sort of a benediction and get out of here. <laughs> all right. Once again, we turn in love and joy and just the sense of fulfillment and delight, recognizing that in this place of absolute presence, of absolute love, of infinite intelligence, all of it, all of it, all of it, that we have celebrated and that that which we have needed to hear has resonated and has dropped down deep into our systems and that which we know we are to do, we are inspired as we leave here to do it that we are blessed and that everybody in this church is blessed. Everybody, whether they are online or, or in this room, we are all blessed and we are all grateful. So I know that just the simple connection that we have, the spiritual, wondrous, magnificent connection is that which sustains us as we leave this room. And I'm certain, absolutely certain, that we are blessing not only to ourselves but to each other and in the world. So we bless this church. We bless all churches, all ashrams, all synagogues, all mosques, all paths to God. We know that all of them are here with the recognition and the, the, proclaim, the proclamation that right where we are, God is, and all 
is well. So with that knowing, I am grateful. I release this word into law, saying, and so it is. And I invite you to join me as we all say, amen. Mm -hmm. See you next week. Mm -hmm.